Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this uh, post-mortem of my Blitz game number 727. I had the white pieces and start off with knight f3, the uh, reti opening. Um, lots of different responses here. I usually play knight f6 myself, a kind of waiting move. My opponent uh, went with g6. He has some definite ideas about how he wanted to play this uh, opening, which is uh, pretty interesting, I thought. Let's see, I go with c4 here. You know, probably I should have played. Let's see, what does the opening book say? You know, going for the reti, I think... Uh, g3 is normally played next and then c4 but this is all part of the plan so it looks a little bit like an english opening um this way but i have i have uh, different ideas here with the reti the idea is to build up uh, the uh, bishop along the light square diagonal and, and uh, if possible even get a double fianchetto and build up the other bishop along the dark square diagonal but black has uh, prevented that by uh, fianchettoing his bishop early on and he follows up with a very interesting move, f5. So he's playing a, um, a Leningrad Dutch. He's playing a Dutch defense here. And uh, if I played uh, if I played d4 at any point, this would be a perfectly uh, normal uh, opening, a, uh, a fianchettoed uh, queen's pawn opening against a Dutch defense. But, well, that's not my intention. I'm going for a reti-style opening. And um, he went with e5 here, an interesting approach. Um, I don't know if that's the normally uh, part of the uh, Dutch defense. Maybe he's trying to punish me for not playing d4. But that uh, e5 pawn, it's not clear if that's a uh, it's if that's really helping him. Um, I do need to uh, prevent him from uh, pushing on to e5, at least uh, prevent that from happening without some sort of a penalty, because I don't want him to permanently lock in my bishop here. So d3 is played, but that's a uh, part of the plan anyway, because I'm going to be uh, opening up a diagonal for my uh, dark squared bishop, since I can't come over here to b2. I can maybe use it along this diagonal. Let's see, we're just out of the opening book at this point. He goes uh, c6, I castle, and then he goes knight f6, which is a, a blunder, of course. <laughs> so if you, uh, if you didn't spot this during the game, maybe you can uh, check it out now. Why is that move a blunder? Okay, I'm going to uh, give the answer away now. And the reason it's a blunder is because he left his pawn hanging, and there's nothing wrong with just taking it. There's no punishment here. Um, there's no clever discovery with the knight. If you look at all the squares the knight can do, go to, it doesn't threaten anything. In some cases, the knight just gets taken, and uh, in any case, I have no trouble just retreating my knight back to f3. So, uh, so that's just a free pawn. I really should have grabbed it. <laughs> so anyway, I ignored that, and... Um, played knight to c3. I was just sort of continuing my setup here, but uh, really there's no excuse. It's kind of like uh, my uh, previous game. I just was a little bit sleepy in the opening and not not reacting to things properly. Anyway, um, he castled. Um, I went bishop d2 now, and uh, having given up on the uh, plan of fianchettoing that bishop, I developed to a normal square, and maybe I'll bring my rook to the c file or to, uh, and the, actually I end up playing it to b1, but rook to c1 is also possible in some circumstances. And he plays d6. So finally, he's defended that pawn. So it had been hanging for a couple of moves there. Anyway, I go with b4. I don't even have to uh, support that with a pawn. He's got no pressure against the uh, the b4 square. So I can just push that on. He goes knight bd7. Go rook to b1 now. Just getting that off the diagonal. I wasn't sure which, which file was actually going to open up, but I thought... Uh, and more likely I'm going to push forward with uh, b5 at some point. It might be useful to have the rook there. Um, he went with e4 now. And uh, well, I thought e4 just lost a pawn during the game. But it turns out there is a clever way he has of, um, of uh, well, holding on to his material, not going a pawn down. So there's uh, another point where if you want to pause and think about it. Uh, well, let's, let's put, on the, uh, put the situation on the board. Um, Right here, after I move my knight, I've got three pieces attacking it, and he's only got one piece defending it. And uh, and if he pushes that pawn forward, then I'll just take it. But there is a uh, a way to save the material here, if you want to uh, pause the video and think about it. Okay, I'm going to give the answer away now. Yeah, the answer is uh, knight to e5. You can't save that pawn, but you can counterattack uh, one of my pawns. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't have such a great... It's not, not so easy for me to defend the c-pawn. If I push it forward, then he can push the d-pawn forward, defending his e-pawn. So probably it's best for me to just go ahead and grab, and then he can take here. 
and stay uh, materially even. That is still a good position for white. My, my pieces are slightly better placed and the center is open. Um, he has these two pawns. He has his two pawns. His two extra pawns are on the C and D file, and my two extra pawns are on the uh, F and E file. So, uh, so both of us have uh, the same number of pawns in the center, in a way. Um, and uh, yeah, he's got a good bishop. His other bishop can develop on this diagonal. It's probably a pretty even game. I think uh, the only awkward piece in this uh, setup is this knight over here on C4. He might get chased away. Maybe I gain a tempo sometime. But uh, anyway, that would be um, a fine position for both sides. Anyway, he went rook to e8, but it's not sufficient to defend the pawn, and so I just took it. I decided to take with the c pawn. I think it turns out to be about the same since he traded off, and I took back with the other knight. And then he came in here with knight f6. And um, yeah, I didn't want to retreat this knight, so I just kept exchanging. And um, not that I think necessarily the end game is a win, but uh, well, it's certainly a better end game for me. And uh, and there's still uh, the middle game here. I wasn't heading for the end game. I was trying to get a, a middle game with an advantage. But um, let's see. My my bishop maneuver didn't work out. Well, he found a nice counter to it. So uh, you know, my idea here in playing bishop f4 is that I'm attacking this pawn, and if he pushes it forward, then uh, I will, uh, I'll trade it off and maybe create an isolated pawn there. So um, I was thinking that would be pretty good for me. Um, but he has a, a nice uh, response. So instead of bishop f4, um, the chess engine is recommending b5, which I eventually get around to playing, but it takes quite a while. But uh, b5 is a good thematic move in this position. You know, I push the queenside pawns to enhance the power of this bishop, so I should just continue pushing those pawns forward and trying to make this bishop even stronger. Um, so, but uh, bishop f4, it's just a, an idea that didn't work out because he goes bishop f5 first, kicking my rook. Uh, let's say I reposition the rook, and then he brings uh, his other rook, rook a to d1. So he gets, uh, not only does he defend that pawn, but he gets his uh, development going. So uh, this is all pretty, uh, well, it's a uh, better for black than than what I could have had. So uh, so I'm still up a pawn, but uh, he's, he's got his pieces organized and, uh, you know, maybe some compensation for the lost pawn. Um, so I was trying to figure out how to reorganize things. Once again, uh, the chess engine just wants you to push on with b5. Um, and I decided eventually this pressure on the e file is going to be too much. And I'm going to push this e pawn forward probably to e3, where it's uh, solidly supported and that would uh, restrict the motion of this bishop, and it might get kind of uh, awkward over here on the queen side. He can king side. He can kick it with the pawn, for example. Um, so I decided to retreat this bishop first. But as I said, the chess engine would just uh, leave the bishop there and and push on with the pawns on the queen side. Not worry so much about uh, future future pressure on the e file because that's not happening just yet. But well, it, it happens pretty quickly. We see queen e5. Now he's going after that pawn. I push forward to e3. And um, he dropped his queen back to e7. Just uh, doing some maneuvering there. Oh, he wanted to get it off of this uh, diagonal because I'm threatening to put a bishop here and force some exchanges. Um, but I can do that anyway, even with the queen out of the way. It just would have been with a tempo if the queen hadn't moved. So uh, bishop there, and then he takes which wouldn't have been an option if, uh, if he had left the queen there and I played bishop c3. He would have moved the queen out of the way and then I would have taken. So when he takes it, it um, well, it lifts my rook, but maybe it um, it's not clear that that's the square I want the rook on. It's a loose piece there, and he tries to exploit it immediately with queen f6. So I play uh, queen c1, just defending the rook. And um, yeah, I'm still trying to figure out how to deal with these pawns, but eventually I come to the idea that I'm going to have to push the b pawn forward. Now the problem with uh, pushing the c pawn forward is he'll always just push with uh, d5, keep things locked up here, and um, yeah, it should be okay for black. Still a pawn down, but uh, pretty solid. Um, let's see, he went rook to e7, maybe preparing to double on the e file, and I went in with b5. So he took, we got this exchange, and uh, now I've got an isolated pawn to attack, and uh, also my bishop is looking all the way down to uh, b7 there, and I can get a rook to the 7th rank as well. I was kind of expecting him just to push that pawn forward, but um, he decided to um, save 
his B pawn by pushing his D pawn, which uh, actually seems to work reasonably well. I have, um, you know, a bishop on it. I can uh, add more force. I can attack with more pieces, and I start with rook D1, but he can defend it. He can um, drop his bishop back, or he can push it forward, and what he decided to do was just to liquidate it. Um, I exchanged, and um, also he's he's got this... Um, protection of the b-pawn from the side, but I still have this idea of coming down here the rook to c7. Um, but he should really just uh, take this pawn off. So the chess engine, you know, rates this position as a plus one for white. So I'm a pawn up and uh, gives best play is something like this. He takes, I take, queen takes, and then I need to be careful here actually. He's got some threats and uh, so h4 is the recommended move. The threat here he is uh, lining his queen up on the e-file and coming in here and delivering a check and if that pawn were still back yeah let's back up a square if the pawn were still back on uh, h2 then the the threat like i said queen there and then threatening to come down to e1 after the exchange um, the rook comes here with check after block with the bishop this bishop comes in and that's actually a, a mate if he gets the the rook to the back rank and the bishop to h3 i'll be in big trouble so um i have to be careful here um let's see uh what did he play he played rook e to d7 some of these ideas occur in the game anyway um let's see i went with rook c7 now going after the b pawn and just getting a rook on the seventh rank he decided to trade and then he ended up taking with the queen. I thought he maybe did that trade so he could take with the rook. But, um, well, he wanted to uh, get this battery going. And once again, there's this immediate threat here of uh, rook to the, uh, yeah, of the queen to the back rank, forcing a exchange or blocking with the bishop, and then he can go after my bishop with uh, bishop to h3. And uh, so that's a severe threat. I have to find a way to deal with it. But um, bishop to f3 turns out to be a nice... Uh, way to deal with the problem. It gives a, a lift, a square for the king to escape to, uh, some luft for the king, and uh, and the bishop here also protects the uh, d1 square, so he's not coming into d1. Anyway, he decided to um, offer this trade of the bishop. Well, it, it uh, maybe is the only way he had of defending this pawn. Now he still had yeah, at this point, if he pushes the pawn forward, I can take the A pawn. So this may have been his only way to save the B pawn. But that allows me to trade, and I was thinking this would be good. <laughs> Although, when I got to this position, I realized once again that there's uh, trouble because the uh, the queen is guarding all of these escape squares, and if I lift my queen off the back rank, his rook uh, comes in here and delivers a mate. So I have to be careful. And I was running a bit low on time, so I went for the simplification uh, once again, the chess engine thinks just playing h4 here, uh, giving my king some space, is the best way to play this, keeps the biggest advantage. Um, I just went straight to the end game at this point, and this was mostly a decision, uh, not because I thought the end game was necessarily a win, but you know, it's obviously an advantage for white, but mainly this was done to simplify things so I wouldn't lose on time. So uh, he takes the queens off, and we get a, a rick and pawn end game, pawns on both sides, and I have an extra pawn. Um, the chess engine rates this as plus one, which means that uh, it doesn't see a win, actually. Uh, it means that uh, I've got the extra pawn, but the chess engine doesn't see any immediate way to force the win through. Of course, all the pawns are really far back, so uh, you know the chess engines just aren't going to be able to see that far enough ahead. But it also may be true that black could defend this position with correct play. I'm not sure. Anyway, he... Um, plays well for uh, quite a few moves here. Let's see, rook d7, I go a4, there's king f7, he activates his king, I try to get my king into the game, king e6, let's see, I start pushing my pawns forward, he goes king d5, hitting my rook, chase it over, and then he goes king c5. So he's over here, uh, prepared to take advantage of things over on the, the queen side, maybe try and create a passed pawn to counter my passed pawn over here on the king side. Um, I push on with g4, and uh, I, I spent a lot of time here because I was a little bit worried about this line. I thought I would show this to you because it shows some some tricks that you can get into in these rick and pawn endgames. You always have to look for these quick uh, descents into a king and pawn endgame, and you have to make sure you're still winning because um, 
What's important at this point is not uh, how many pawns there are, but how quick are they? <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's got uh, a few moves to come over here and take these pawns, and then he's got a few more moves to queen it. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's nine moves to get a queen, and I have to be convinced that I can get a queen in nine moves. Um, but the chess engine is not at all worried. That's why it is winning here. So something like this. Get the king out of the way of the f pawn. So I have to take two moves of the king, but he has to move his king over to get my pawns out of the way. And now already I can get my pawns rolling while he's still occupied um, gobbling up my pawns. He even has to take this pawn to be able to get his pawns passed. And um, so obviously you can see I'm queening first at this point, and that's enough for a clear win for white. So he didn't go for that. But there are circumstances where uh, a situation like that can be advantageous for the side with the fewer pawns if his pawns were just uh, better placed or if uh, I had fewer pawns over here. Um, that's, that's a potential winning idea. Uh, let's see, so he went a6. His idea is just to undermine my pawns over here, try and get some past pawn, but I'm not having that, I take. And uh, let's see, he played. Uh, and then I bring my king up. He brings his rook down with a check. I block, plays rook to d7 back here. Uh, we start pushing on. He trades, and all the while the chess engine is still giving this uh, position uh, a, a value of plus one. I was thinking right here that I have really excellent winning chances, so I'm sort of a little bit surprised that the engine does not find a winning line from this point. I think uh, this is one of those positions where actually if you let it sit long enough, the evaluation starts to rise, so maybe uh, winning at this point. But I am not entirely sure. But it, the one thing I have in my favor is there are pawns on both sides of the board, which uh, uh, makes it difficult for him to stop everything. Let's see. He played uh, rook to b7. It, it's a clearly winning king and pawn endgame. That's that's important at this point because I have a pawn which is just passed, and uh, that can be used to distract his king. His king won't have time to come over here, eat this pawn, and queen that one. So um, let's see. I just start pushing my passed pawn. And he played h6, and the chess engine definitely gives h6 as a losing move. So this position, um, it takes it a long time to uh, find if, uh, if white is winning. It, it, like I said, the evaluation slowly rises, uh, so maybe it's winning for white. But after h6, it suddenly jumps up because uh, I was thinking, you know, I, I was going to push my pawn forward and bring my rook down anyway, but this allows me to bring my rook down to g6 immediately, hitting his pawn. And um, it's a double attack. He can't defend both of these pawns. He uh, attacks my pawn instead, but uh, that's not, not working because I take his pawn and defend mine at the same time. So uh, let's see, he struggled on a little bit, but this is pretty straightforward at this point. I'll cancel that. What did he play here? He played rook to c7. King g4, rook to c4, and uh, just king to f5, get my king in front. He checks and king to g6. I'm out of the way of my pawn, and uh, I'm protected from checks by my rook. Let's see, he tried uh, rook to a5, but this just allows me to go into winning king and pawn endgame. And after a few moves, he decided uh, to resign. So anyway, interesting game. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.